one. Good evening, everyone. I'm Councillor Ajmer Garawal, and I'm the chair of Central Hounslow Area Forum. I find that quite a, a mouthful to say, isn't it? Central Housing Area Forum. Anyway, um, it's it's 5.30 now, and I would like to welcome you all to this virtual meeting of the Central Hounslow Area Forum. I would like to welcome the members of the Area Forum who are sitting this evening, as well as council officers who will be assisting members throughout the meeting. In addition, I would like to welcome members of the public who are watching this meeting at home. As you all may know, until recently, virtual <coughs> meetings for council business were not legal. But as a result of the coronavirus pandemic and the quarantine arrangements required by government, the law has recently been changed to let local authorities meet in a virtual way to make decisions. Therefore, this meeting is taking place using the recently introduced <coughs> government regulations. Could I please ask you to take, turn your microphones off? Thank you. The way this meeting will work will be that as chair, I will be running the meeting and inviting people to speak. As it is very easy for people to speak over each other in meetings like this, I will ask each member or officer to speak in turn at the appropriate stage. This will mean that there should normally be no need for people to interrupt or to ask to speak. However, I shall make sure that all members have ample opportunity to ask questions and make comments on reports and applications before them. The exception to this arrangement will be the council officers who may turn on their microphones to alert me to any procedural or constitutional issues that need addressing, although I would expect this to be a rare occurrence. In addition, we have producer of the meeting from our IC department who may also contact me if necessary. But I think it is unlikely if all goes well, fingers crossed, as I hope it will. The Etiquette for members of the area forum and for officers who are expecting to speak will be to mute their microphones unless you are asked to speak. This means that only one person will be speaking at a time and there will be no background noise, making it easier for us all to follow the meeting and also for those watching at home. I will also ask members always to say who they are when they make their contribution and to speak slowly and clearly for the same reason. That's why I'm speaking slowly. I find it quite frustrating speaking slowly, <laughs> but there you are. Um, in addition to members and council officers, we also have Mr. Alan Rides from Hounslow Chamber of Commerce, who will be speaking on regeneration of the town centre post COVID. I would now like to introduce each of the members here tonight, one by one. Yeah. And I'll start. My name is Councillor Ajmer Garewal, and as I said, I'm the chair of this area forum. I'm also one of the ward councillors for Hounslow Central Ward. And now I would like you, when your name is uh, mentioned called please turn on your microphone and make sure your camera's on and give a brief introduction of yourself so i will start with my vice chair who is councillor bandana chopra hi there good evening everyone i'm bandana chopra and i'm uh, the vice chair of the central hounslow area forum also the ward councillor for hounslow west thank you thank you and next, I'm going to skip Central Ward Councillors for the moment because they're having problems logging on. So we will go to Hounslow Heath Ward. Councillor Vikram Garewal, please introduce yourself. Good evening, Chair. Thank you. Uh, my name is Councillor Vikram Garewal. I'm the uh, Councillor for Hounslow Heath Ward uh, and uh, pleased to be in the Thank you. Uh, 
Councillor Abzalgani, please. Hi, good evening, Chair, and uh, good evening to everyone who is in this meeting. Uh, my name is Councillor Afzal Kiani. I'm, I'm a councillor at Hounslow Heath Ward. Thank you. Uh, Hounslow South Ward councillors, are you there, Councillor Tom Bruce, to introduce yourself? No, it seems Councillor Bruce hasn't logged on yet. And Councillor Shaida Mirban? Also not here, looks like it. And the third councillor from Hounslow South Ward is Councillor Karen Smith, but she has sent her apologies. And I can just see Councillor Bruce, who has joined us. So can you please introduce yourself, Councillor Bruce? What, what perfect timing. Sorry, Chair, for my lateness, childcare issues. I'm Councillor Tom Bruce, um, and I'm from Hounslow South. Thank you. And we go to Hounslow West Ward councillors, uh, where my vice chair is one of them, Madhana Chopra, who's al already introduced herself. Uh, so, Councillor Jagdish Sharma, please. Thank you. Good evening, all. I am Jagdish Sharma, Hounslow West Ward. Thank you. And with that, we go to Councillor Sohan Samra, please. I know you're there. I saw you a little while earlier, Councillor Sumra. I believe Councillor Sumra's on mute, Chair. Yeah. Are you on mute? Unmute yourself. Mr. Sumra, if you would unmute yourself. Yeah. He's going to make a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, we'll go to. Sorry, okay. can you unmute yourselves, please? I can hear echo from somewhere. OK. Councillor Central, uh, Councillor Pritam Garewal, please introduce yourself. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, I'm back on now. Um, Pritam Garewal, Councillor Pritam Garewal from Hounslow Central. Thank you. And Councillor Nisar Malik, have you joined us? Hello, Councillor Nisar Malik. No, he is not there either. OK, and so we will wait for Councillor Shahid Amirban to come and Nisar Malik to join us. Hopefully they will be here soon. In the meantime, I will invite, uh, I will um, introduce you um, and invite our guests uh, for this evening. So we have Mandy Skinner, who is the Assistant Chief Executive, who will be joining us today. Hello, Mandy. Hello, Chair. Hello, Mandy Skinner. Hi, nice to have you with us. Thank you. And uh, Elliot Brooks, Director of Resident Services. Could you introduce yourself, please? Good evening, Chair. Um, just to clarify, my role is actually Director of Communities now, but I was formerly the, the Director of Resident Services. So um, good evening, everyone. OK, stand corrected. So communities, right? OK, uh, we have Mr. Alan Rides, Chamber of Commerce. Hello. Hello, good evening. It's very nice to meet all of you, um, to some friends and some new friends across the borough. Thank you. And of course, we'll be speaking to you later. And uh, we have Tom Brooks from Enterprise and Support Officer, or not from Enterprise and Support Officer. Yeah, I work for the council. Thank you, Chair. Nice to be here. Hi, Tom. Thank you so very much. OK, once again, I will ask everyone to make sure, please, that you have unmuted, your, uh, you have muted your microphones because um, there is echo and sound coming through. Hi, and I'm Councillor, Hello? can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so Mrs. Amrak from Hounslow West. Hello, thank you so much for introducing yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, I'd just like to just inform you that Councillor Cheda Mobon, she's trying to join, she's having problems joining okay. on the computer. So she's going to try and join on her phone, which is what I've suggested to her. At least we can hear her then. Okay, that's good. Lovely. Thank you for that. Um, OK, and uh, let me tell you that uh, I'd like you know, we also have uh, our clerk and APO with us this evening, who, of course, will be helping us through. So John, Wyman, uh, John Wyman White, please introduce yourself. Hello.
Hello, John. John, John. Sorry, sorry, Chair, having a slight technical problem there. <laughs> not very encouraging, uh, as my role this evening will be to help uh, run this evening's meeting alongside the Chair and the Clerk. Mm, lovely, thank you. And uh, Bill Lee, hello. Good evening, everybody. Put a tile on in case I had to switch my camera on. I'm glad. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction, <laughs> Chair. That's <laughs> nice, Bill. Talking. We're given enough time to put your tie on now. <laughs> Is you're not in your pyjamas then? Oh, no, no, I need the bottom half. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So Thank you. Good to see that, meeting, thankfully. In, I'll be taking notes for the meeting, butting in occasionally. I've um, got a couple of questions from the public to read out, one of which actually has an answer already. So um, it's Robert Meldrum is coming to play, so I'll very efficient. the appropriate items. That's great. Okay. Couldn't be more efficient than that, getting the answers already. Thank you. Uh, okay, we also have officers acting, um, producing a role for the technical side of the meeting, but as they are not, not expected to be involved in the discussion this, uh, of this meeting, I will thank them for their help, but not ask them to introduce themselves so they can stay hidden away. <laughs> OK, um, I would like to say to the members of the public um, are reminded that the agenda and all the items being discussed by the Area Forum tonight can be found on the Council website under the Central Hounslow Area Forum meeting page. So if you want to see them, that is where to look. I also want to make sure that all members have seen the agenda and if you have not, please speak now if you haven't had them. So obviously everyone's received them. Thank you for that. Um, if you should find you're having technical problems and need to log out of the meeting and come back in again, please let me know immediately, ideally beforehand if possible, uh, but if not afterwards by turning on your microphone. Now this would be a permitted interruption. We can then decide how far we need to recap um, if that's necessary or if the member needs uh, not to vote on any item, but as we're not voting on anything, that won't matter today. Finally, I would like to say to any member of the public listening or watching, first of all, thank you for joining us this evening and we hope this meeting will go well, but any virtual meeting may suffer from an unexpected technical hitch. So if that happens, please do bear with us. I should also clarify that this, this meeting is being recorded and it will be made available on the Council's YouTube channel in the next few days. Contributors to the meeting are asked to remember that they will therefore be included in the recording of this public meeting. So thank you for listening to all that and now we will move on to the first item of the agenda. So members of the public were asked to submit questions for the area forum ahead of the meeting as they are not able to speak to members directly they would be in as they would in a conventional meeting. However, for residents watching this meeting, it is possible to submit questions via the Q&A function on MS Teams during the meeting itself. Select Q&A on the right side of the screen and type your question in the compose box and then select send. If you would prefer to ask your question anonymously, select ask anonymously. Members will try to answer as many questions as they possibly can tonight. Thank you. OK, so we go to agenda item two and that's apologies for absence. So I have already received uh, apologies from Councillor Karen Smith. Anybody else? Chair, I, was, <clears throat> I said I have to leave the meeting quarter past seven, six. Yes, that's fine. Thank you. That's noted, Councillor Sharma. Thank you. <clears throat> um, OK, and with that, let me tell you then, um, as chair, I confirm that the quorum of the area forum is four. There are no matters for decision on the agenda, so the meeting can still proceed if in court, through, although reports cannot be considered to have been formally noted uh, if this is the case. 
And with that, we now come to the minutes of the last meeting and you need a good memory for this because the last meeting of this committee was held on the 16th of January 2020. I know it was a very long time ago and that's due to reasons we're all familiar with. I intend to take both corrections and accuracy, um, corrections for accuracy and any matters arising together. So may I ask members if they have any corrections which they wish to propose? Please speak now. You may unmute yourself and speak now. Thank you, no one, okay. So may I now ask members to agree the minutes? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, now here, would usually I would, usually sign a physical copy of the minutes, but as this is currently impractical, I shall ask the committee officer to ensure that I am provided with a paper copy to sign either by post or when it is possible to attend Hounslow House. In the meantime, the mi minutes will formally record that we have agreed the minutes as correct record of the last meeting. Thank you. So with that, we move on to agenda item number four, and this is community engagement. We now move into the first item for discussion, community engagement. Hounslow Council is currently in the middle of a wide ranging review of the way we engage with our residents. We want to build stronger relationships with our residents and develop effective partnerships between the Council and our citizens. To discuss our plans, I'm very pleased to introduce Mandy Skinner, the Assistant Chief Executive, and Elliot Brooks, the Director of Resident Services, which I've got written here, but I'm told Director of Communities now. Um, and uh, they are leading on the development of a new way of engaging with our communities. And I think we also uh, have Councillor Catherine Dunn here um, to speak on community engagements. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you very much. And um, may I just say before they, they proceed that you may send in any questions that you have during their presentation and we will address them tonight. So with this, uh, I will ask um, in whichever order you want to go, Catherine or Mandy Skinner. Yeah, I think I'm going to go first. OK, thank you, Catherine. Welcome to the Area Forum. Thank you very much for coming tonight. OK. OK, it's all Great. yours. Thank you yep. very much for, for having me here tonight. Um, the first of the um, online Area Forums. It's quite exciting. Um, so, yeah, my, I'm the Cabinet Member for Communities and the Climate Emergency. And I've been working with Mandy and Elliot on developing a new approach to engaging with communities. This piece of work builds on the ambitions that we set out in the Thriving Communities Strategy last year. It seems like a completely different era when we were actually in buildings and meeting in person. Um, but we did, we, we launched a, a thriving community strategy and um, uh, and that ties in with the corporate plan. Um, things have obviously changed um, the coronavirus pandemic has changed things. Um, and whilst it, it, it's been a, a very difficult time in many ways, it also has given us an opportunity that we can build on um, to develop new relationships with residents. Um, and the community based on transparency, trust and mutual respect um, and bringing together all members of the diverse communities and, and hoping to, that everyone can have the voices heard. Um, as a council, we've been doing a lot of work on how we recover as a borough from the coronavirus. Um, and as we started to think about that recovery, it became clear that the relationships that the council has with our re residents um, had started to actually build and strengthen over the course of the pandemic because of the way the community pulled together and worked with the council um, and the, the voluntary sector. Um, we wanted to be able to keep the good things that, that we had established there and then prioritise and strengthen them more. Um, 
So we established a community recovery board, um, which was part of the, the recovery programme. And uh, I chaired that board and that's been leading on improving our knowledge, um, understanding um, our residents and, and getting the best representation from our residents. Um, one of the things the board did was to commission a review of community engagement. And I know that um, some people, councillors and residents and, and community groups have already been involved in that. Um, and that's what we're going to take the opportunity to talk to you about tonight. This is just the start of a conversation. Um, we will be reaching out to residents in, in many different ways, as well as ward councillors and community groups. Um, starting now um, to understand how all of your experiences can shape our future approach to engagement. So with that, I will hand over to Mandy or Elliot <laughs> to tell you more about it. So, so I was just going to say, so I think you're going to hand over to Elliot who's got some slides. I just want to echo um, uh, Councillor Dunn's point that, that today is really just the start, but also um, we're really keen to hear about different ways that you think we can best take this um, uh, conversation forward as well. So it's not just about hearing um, tonight, but the ways that you think we can um, hear what people have got to say. But Elliot's going to share some slides now and walk us through the presentation. I think someone else is... Ah. Oh, someone else has shared for me. Um, OK, th thank you, Mandy, and thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dunn. So just to, just to really reiterate what, what you've heard already, this is really the start of the conversation. So really hot off the press, this piece of work. Uh, the first forum, obviously, tonight, but actually the, the first time we've shared any of these findings yet um, in the piece of work that we've been done. So if we could move forward, please, Sadiq. Yeah, so just as some context, really, in terms of the piece of work around the community engagement was, like Councillor Dunn said, part of a wider piece of work around community recovery. Uh, so Councillor Dunn, as she said, chaired the community recovery board and there were four key strands of work really that, that fell out of that, that, that setup. The first was to understand the impact um, that the community had experienced through the pandemic. So we've looked at lots of data by ward experiences. We had a survey carried out where over a thousand residents responded. So we could really get to the bottom of actually the things that people went through and how they how they were experiencing the pandemic and some of the issues that, that, that came out. The second piece of work was was this one in terms of we want to cre wanted to create a new relationship with our with the residents in the borough and have a new dialogue in a new way. So I think there's been a, an appreciation for some time that the council's approach to engagement um, needed a look at. So this isn't just about the pandemic. This was something that was on the radar before before coronavirus, and we wanted to really review, take a strip it right back in terms of how we how we create relationships, engage with our communities to make sure that we not only talk to communities and they talk to us, but that it actually it leads to something and there's real influence there. So that piece of work was part of the community recovery, but would have taken place anyway. The third piece of work was, um, and some of you will be, will be aware of this, was a review of how we work with the voluntary sector. So as Councillor Dunn said, the, the voluntary sector was has been vital over the over the past few months in terms of stepping up faith groups, charities, local organisations, mutual aid groups, um, groups that have just popped up through the pandemic really have stepped up and helped the community through the last through the last few months. And we want to enhance that, build on that and make sure that we have a strong strategic relationship with our voluntary sector. So that's a piece of work that's also been going on. And then the final piece of work, which really, as, as the diagram there on the left tries to tries to demonstrate is is the community solutions piece. So many of you will be aware of the community hub that was set up in the early stages of the pandemic, and that predominantly dealt with uh, the need to get food out to people in the borough who were shielding or vulnerable and couldn't get access to food for a number of reasons. And that was fine and it worked really well and we were delivering food parcels to at one stage uh, over 800 residents a week. What actually happened through that period was that people were talking to us and we were finding out that there was often more to it than, than just food and there were some 
further issues, more background issues that meant that these residents were vulnerable and needed assistance. So we thought there was something there to build on from the community hub, something that we're, we're calling now community solutions. And we are developing a model that we'll, and we'll be talking to, to people over the coming months about this, which is one place where people can go to get support and assistance, not just from the council, but from all partners in the borough, the community, the voluntary sector, our partners in health and the council itself. But today um, we're, we're very much here to talk about the approach to community engagement. Some key outcomes. Um, oh, OK, sorry, just, yeah, just one second, Sadiq. So some key outcomes that, from the piece of work that we want all residents to feel connected and live in pleasant neighbourhoods and where they can play a role, a real role in shaping their community. We want people to have a voice, uh, the community voice. We want to hear what people say. We want it to be a dialogue. We really want that interactive conversation with people. We want to thrive in a sustainable voluntary and community sector that does work with us to shape services, co-designs, co-delivers and truly meets the needs of our residents. And then finally, through that community solutions piece, we want to make sure that people do get the right help and support to lead independent lives, but where they want it in a way that suits them where they need it in their neighbourhoods, often delivered right on their doorstep. We can move forward now, Sadiq. So the, the review. So what um, we quickly commissioned an organisation um, called CLES, the Centre for Local Economic Studies, who are experts in the field of community engagement, community wealth building. And we really wanted to, to, to get them in to give us a fresh look uh, at how we could approach engagement. So this wasn't a case of an organisation saying this is what you should do Hounslow, we've had a look at everything. This was actually someone to give us a hand with this piece of work. It was really an extra pair of hands but with that external view and experience that really could give us a guide really and give us some help about how to shape our engagement, our engagement going forward. The piece of work, although CLES have done their study and their review. That's not the piece of work finished. That's actually the piece of work starting. Now what we have to do is work with groups like, like this tonight and the, and the other forums and groups of residents who we'll go out and talk to and say, OK, based on what we've learned, what we know now, how should it look and feel in mm -hmm. Hounslow? So CLES have given us some recommendations, which we'll go through and some <coughs> themes. But this is the start of the conversation about how we put that into place in Hounslow. So what 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 did class and uh, what did we do through that the review? So it was made up of, of a review of the council's current approach to engagement and an analysis of the strengths and weaknesses and what's going on out there at the moment, the good stuff, the stuff that doesn't work quite so well. Um, we wanted to try and grab a picture of what good looks like. You know what what do people um, think good engagement should look and feel like, and how close are we to that, and what are what are the gaps? We wanted to look at the good practice out there. You know, everyone who, who, who we've spoken to over the over the past few months can point to really good examples of of engagement of where it's worked. But actually, it might be happening in in, in isolation and, and not in a strategic way that everyone's aware of and, and joined up with. Um, and then finally, what we were hoping from the from the piece of work is a set of recommendations, as I've said, which we can then use um, to go out and start that conversation and, and co-produce and work with our residents and councillors and voluntary sector organisations and all partners across the borough to really embed those principles of engagement that we think will make sure people have an influence. The way they went about it, so there was an element of benchmarking, see what other organisations like like the council do, things that work well, again, things that that, that maybe we could use and, and have our own version of. Um, there was a framework of the existing methods of communication and engagement and so we could evaluate those and see if we could demonstrate that that actually led to concrete changes about the way that we work. Uh, there were lots of uh, group interviews and workshops, uh, council officers, members, many of you here tonight, area forum chairs I know we've spoken to directly, members of the public, um, organisations that we work closely with. Focus groups of residents, um, they got together on a number of occasions to share their views. Um, we had some really, really, um, I suppose, challenging, challenging sort of comments and statements from residents about how the how the council engages and things that we could do better. And they, they clearly want to build on the momentum where where people have got involved during the pandemic and they have helped each other out and they, and they want to, to build on that. We've also looked at the the partnership 
architecture, as we'll call it, across across the borough to see where people already are engaged, because the council does want to engage with people, but it knows that, that people are already engaged across the borough. So we need to understand where those where that engagement already takes place and how we can not duplicate, but align to that and complement that, that engagement that already goes on. Just move forward, Sadiq, thank you. So some of the some of the, the the headline recommendations as i said earlier so the piece of work literally has has just finished um we were we were handed the report um just a couple of days ago very weighty report lots of information in there and what we've tried to do just for, for tonight's meeting because the date was obviously set in the diary we've tried to tease out those those key recommendations give give, give the forum tonight a real flavor of those and and have a have a have a discussion about those so what came out really was about trying to have big local conversations. So I think the council in the past has been very good at in inviting people to talk to them about 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 issues and come to speak to the council, whether that at a, at a community hall or at House of the House itself. But actually, the, the report and the findings recommend that we should get out there and speak to people, you know, where they live, in what they call their community and their neighbourhoods, and really get to get to the to the bottom of the issues that that they're facing there. Um, we need to have a look at resources that we that we put into community engagement. We've got big ambitions in this area. We just need to make sure that actually our ambitions are matched by actually the resources that we put in put into the area. We need we need to um, look at the role of, of councillors um, and make sure that we are taking advantage of of the work that councillors do 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 with their with their constituents and actually the relationships that they've built up over time. Um, we want to we do want to co-design with our community. Um, we want to truly be able to demonstrate that actually services are shaped through the conversations that we do have. We want to we want to facilitate social action. So actually, you know, can people really make a difference in their area through potentially through grant funding um, and resources that we can maybe allocate on a local level to people so they can make make a real difference? Um, and we also want to explore maybe methods of engagement that do hand over an element of decision making um, to, the, to the public. So it's something that, that, that needs a lot of thought, but actually these are just the sort of things that we want to tease out. And then finally, we want to look at new structured methods of engagement. Um, they may be assemblies, summits, representative panels to collaboratively sort of shape a borough wide approach to the to the one Hounslow concept um, and reframing the relationship between the public and private sector, or public and private sector organisations. So there's a lot there. Um, it's really important that we take stock at the moment and we don't rush into things. We start the conversations like we're here to, to do tonight. So Sadiq, um, if you could just, we're just just to be clear, I, I've just realised actually that the slides aren't quite the ones that I put forward for this evening. I was going to, to share my screen, but so it's just really two more slides that were, sorry Sadiq, it's just, if you continue Sadiq, but it's just two more slides that we're going to use. Are you there Sadiq? Yeah, sorry, one second, I'm just trying to so, get it up in. Sorry. Have you got the right pack Sadiq? Yeah, is that? We did. I'll just. Um, I could do it if you can't. Uh, if you can, sorry, I'm just. Yeah, no, I will. That's fine. Just give me one second. Sorry. Yep. So I will just uh, jump through to where we were. Apologies. So. So we've we, we, we've looked at what the work that Claire's did, um, and actually, in the way forward, whilst we, they came out with the with the, the big recommendations, in in the way forward, they actually proposed a model that we could use, which which is quite interesting. So I'll just quickly, briefly talk through this. So um, the period of taking stock, really, in capturing where we were, where we are. So what does it look like at the moment? As I've talked about, those strengths, weaknesses, um, and what what people really need. Then the listening phase, which is really what we're what we're starting tonight. So to get out there, talk to people, all stakeholders, people who've got a say in this and interest, that's councillors, that's local organisations, it's obviously residents in the borough. So really listen to what's important. When we've done that listening period, it is that moving on to, to reflecting 
about what we've heard. So we really need to understand, make sense of everything that we gather, um, try and make sure we understand what it means. What did people really, really mean when they were telling us what they told us? Uh, so that's a that's a key period of the reflect the reflecting period of what we hear. We then move on to that to that to that co-producing -pro co local engagement mechanisms that will really work for people in the borough. And it might well be that certain things work in certain areas that don't work it in others, and that's fine. Um, so we have to be brave and say, actually, this might work here. We'll try it. If it doesn't work, we'll try something different. But we we keep co-producing these local mechanisms with people where they live. And then finally, you know, that that whole piece around passing on the power to people so they've got real influence and they feel like actually it's worth getting in, getting involved with the council. It's worth having that conversation because it does make a difference. Um, the model is great. But the model isn't a start and finish. It really is something that actually, if we get right, we'll continue doing. So it really is an iterative process. We'll always be taking stock. We'll always be listening. We'll always be reflecting. So whilst it's going to be very useful to embed the piece of work, it isn't a start and finish. It will be something that, that continues going forward. Um, so we've looked already on, on Sadiq's version of the slides. We did look at the, at the, big, the big key recommendations. Um, so the final thing really is going back to the model that I've just talked through, it is what sort of things might happen over the coming period in each of those in each of those phases. So obviously in that taking stock period, um, we determined what what we know and what we don't know about our communities and we're still doing that, trying to identify those key community groups and local leaders out there that really can have an, have an influence um, and we can and we can work with closely. Reflecting, like I said, reflecting on, on the approaches that have worked well and which don't and the mechanisms available for sharing knowledge. Um, in the listening phase that, that we're out, that, that we're in now, real, real trying to understand what people want and what people need in terms of their relationship with the council. A piece of work that's been going on in our Green Recovery Board has been the concept of a, of a 15 minute neighbourhood, a, quite a, a broadly used concept about trying to define that local neighbourhood. We're not wedded to that though, it's something we want to explore. We need to understand what, what people feel is their community and what people feel is their neighbourhood. Um, and again, like I've said, trying to trying to identify those local leaders in the community, along with councillors who who can have a real influence. In the reflecting phase, um, that might mean in terms of prioritising the research that we've had. We've had surveys of, of, of lots of lots of residents over the past several months, intelligence and insight from our from our hub at the council around sharing knowledge that all the services have really have really gained in terms of the interaction different services have had with different groups of res residents over the previous months, bringing that all into one place and really understanding it and getting to the bottom of it. There's a piece on on recruitment um, within the council. We need to make sure that actually we're 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 recruiting different types of people that that sort of reflect our community um, and people can really really engage with, align with, and understand that actually people truly truly reflect their their thoughts and what they're going through. Brings us on to to co-producing. Um, we, I talked earlier about the community hub. We, we, you know, we do want to build on that into the community solutions, that community solutions idea. Effective engagement will help that. We'll want residents to design what that looks like um, in, in different places. Like I said earlier, it might look different in one part of the borough than it than it does in the other, and that's fine because the needs are very different. And we talked finally there about about passing on the power. You know. Ultimately, you know, we want people to think that actually they have an influence and they can shape things that happen at the council and it's worthwhile talking to us. Um, so we want to build those forums, rebuild the forums that we that we use to engage with people, make them stronger, make them more collaborative and make it feel like that. Actually, if you come along and speak to, to Hounslow, you do have a say. We do listen, but it, it does it does lead to change as well into some some fundamental change um, and using the one Hounslow banner really of bringing this together in, in, in a way that actually means more than just the council. It's the borough itself. Um, the engagement process and, and making a difference across the piece rather than just one organization. So it, it's a, like I say, it's all it's all very new at the moment. It is the start of the conversation. Um, really interested to hear people's initial thoughts tonight, anything that it stimulates in and they'd like to know more about or actually ideas. I mean, like I think Mandy said earlier, one of the things that one of the reasons we're really here tonight about is actually 
what can people suggest, propose, and what ideas you might have, um, because you're obviously close to close to residents um, and hearing it every day. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much for that. Uh, thank you, uh, Elliot. Thank you, Councillor Dunn and uh, Mandy Skinner. That was a fantastic report and a lot of hard work seems to have gone into that. Thank you very much. And uh, we will now take questions from members of the public. Um, of course, they were asked um, to send in questions on Q&A. And um, I'd just like to say to the public, if there's anything you would like to um, ask about the council's engagement with residents, we will try to answer it for you. So please do send in your questions on the live event Q&A. Um, I just want to say that um, we do have a question from uh, the public anonymously. Uh, someone has asked and said, uh, when you say there were some challenging views raised by residents regarding engagement, what do you mean? OK, um, am I still is my mind? Yes. So yes. I think what, what I mean was is that actually residents were very candid with us and said that actually, and said that on occasions they felt like the council uh, didn't listen to them uh, and that actually they had taken the time to go to meetings, given up their evenings, gone to gone to a, to a meeting to talk about something that then maybe hadn't we hadn't closed the loop and gone back and said, actually, what did we do following that meeting? So it may well have been actually things happened, but we couldn't demonstrate it. and We didn't close the circle, really. So we really need to be better, at, I think, closing the communication, not just opening it. Thank you. And um, I just wanted to say that these questions uh, are coming in, in on Q&A. Um, <laughs> I thought there was another one, but I can't see it. OK, when I see that, we will come back to that. Um, uh, it's in the published folder, Chair. OK, I'm in the published and I can't see another one. Oh, yes, I can. There we are. Thank you. See, I knew there was a reason you were sitting there, John. <laughs> uh, OK, another uh, anonymous has asked, are there any groups whose input is missing from the data collected as part of the initial survey. I'm just thinking of my elderly relatives who would be keen to be involved in a project like this, but have no IT skills to uh, access digital engagement mechanisms such as this one. So is there any other way they can get involved in this? I think, Chair, it's just, uh I just really need to reiterate the point that this is just the start. So we had a, we, we had identified groups um, and quite as quite as we had to do. We, we had to kind of focus our attention quite narrowly to start with in terms of the stakeholder interviews and the focus groups that, that we um, that we set up. But and it's a really big but we will be starting more of a broad dialogue now with with wider groups in the community. We will advertise opportunities out on social media, but not all on social media. We will we can do it through um, through Hounslow Matters. There will be opportunities for people to be engaged in this process. I think that's the commitment that I don't know, Councillor Dunn, we've had conversations about this over the past few days, that she's very keen that actually everyone has an opportunity to have their say in this piece of work. It's about engagement. So we really have to make sure that that we're not just going to do this digitally. You know, we we can, you know, we and there are elements of the council at the moment. We are out and about speaking to people. You know, I've been out to see to see voluntary groups over the last few weeks. So this isn't we're not only operating in the digital way. So we will be out to speak to people. We will make sure that actually anyone who wants to have their say can have their say in a way that suits them. Thank, thank you. Thank Sorry, you so very much. Well, yes, sure. That's Councillor Dunn. Yes. Thank you. No, I just wanted to add to what Elliot said um, to really reiterate that um, there's amazing opportunities afforded by digital technology, like the fact that um, we can all meet tonight while still being in our homes. Um, but we are acutely aware that not everyone in the borough can can access that technology. Um, you know, some people don't have the digital skills. Some people in the borough um, are financially 
excluded and, and and don't you know can't can't afford the broadband and the equipment um so we know that it isn't the whole solution um so we're, we're absolutely determined to make the most of of digital to to enable us to reach more people but we've got to reach those other people as well um and part of this strategy um, and this new way of thinking is as Elliot said that we don't have to do the same everywhere um, and and so you know we can meet some people digitally we can go out and meet others in person we can do what's right for the people that we're engaging with on any particular occasion thank you thank you very much thank you councillor Dunn um, okay so we have no more questions from the public um, and of course that members will know that we need time for contributions and I will ask the APO to alert me to when allocated timings have been reached and I will also ask him to alert me prior to the guillotine being reached if we have not concluded the question by that time. Now uh, I will now take questions from members and may I remind all members at this meeting to introduce themselves each time they speak and also to turn off their microphones when they finish speaking. It's also important to speak slowly and clearly so that everyone can understand what you're saying and as I said earlier please do not speak over one another so what I'm going to do is to um, uh, ask every councillor to speak I'll, I'll invite you one by one so I'll start with um, my vice chair councillor Bandana Chopra do you have any questions uh, thanks chair not at the moment if I have anything I'll ask you later okay thank you very much councillor Tom Bruce no, no questions, Chair. OK, thank you very much. Councillor Pritham Garewal, any questions? Uh, thank you, Chair. All I say is a comment, very good report, but no question at the moment. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Vikram Garewal. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Vikram Garewal of Hounsley Heath. Uh, no questions so far. OK, and Councillor Afzal Kiani. Um, thank you, Chair. This is Councillor Abzal Kiani from Honzalo Heath. Uh, it's a very good report. I have no question at this stage. Thank you. Councillor Nisar Malik, have you joined us? No, doesn't look like it. Councillor Shahida Mirban. I think Shahida could not log in, but she was supposed to be on the phone. No? Uh, yeah, sorry if I can just interrupt there, Chair. Uh, Councillor Mayor Ban has contacted me via email to say that she can hear us, but is right. unable to see us or speak. Um, I've asked IT if they can help. Okay, but, uh, lovely. Councillor Mayor Ban is unfortunately only able to hear. She must be very frustrating for her. Yes, definitely, but there you are. Okay, um, we'll move on to Councillor Jagdish Sharma if he's still with us because he was leaving at 6.15. Councillor Sharma, are you there or have you left? I presume you've left, thank you very much. And Councillor Sohan Samra, any questions? I think Councillor Samra is on mute again, Chair. Councillor Samra, are you muted? Can you unmute your microphone? OK, obviously. No. Sorry, Chair, um, while we wait for Council Summer, I just want to let you know there's another question that came in. OK, uh, I'm just wondering, oh, there, there we are. I was thinking, how do I go into it? I'm learning, I'm learning. This is the first one, don't forget, first area forum. OK, uh, another question. It says, the biggest problem with engagement is getting responses to correspondence from both officers and counsellors. Challenging issues are ignored as a matter of course. FOI requests are often ignored. The public engages in consultations like the local plan. Uh, but then officers ignore the agreed plan, which is citizen engagement address this issue. When is citizen engagement address this issue? Uh, the basics are responding to correspondence and complying with agreed procedure. All the rest is OK. I don't really know what this has to do with our engagement programme, but anything to say? Uh, um, 
Councillor Chair, uh, it's Mandy Skinner. Hello. Hi. Um, uh, just to say, so I, I think the way that we would see the conversation that we want to take forward would indeed include um, these sorts of things too. It, it's all part of the dialogue. And so whilst I, I'm not aware of specific issues around that, we very much would want to make sure that we're, we're thinking about not just engagement, we're thinking about um, the wider conversation. So um, we will pick that up in, in how we take this forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mandy. Um, OK, uh, Councillor Sumra, were you able to get through or did you have a question? Uh, no, no, thanks. No, I don't have a question. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, but excellent report. OK, uh, thank I, you. That's it. No, it's, th thank you. I've got no question. Thank you. Um, yeah, if I may. Yep. Yeah. Um, Councillor Chopra, yep. Yeah. Councillor Mebon has sent me a text because we're sort of keeping in touch so she, she can make sure she's taking part. Uh, mm -hmm. She's listened to everything. She said, thanks for a great report. Uh, what is the plan to reach those that we have been unable to reach so far if they have no IT or if they have language barriers? Chair? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think it's a, it's a it's a great question actually because one of the things that that came out of the um, of the work is that there are there are certain groups of of the community and of the borough that we aren't we haven't proved um, successful at at talking to and engaging with um, and we need to we need to solve that so first of all I mean going back to the digital piece we, we I, I said again that we are going to go out there and speak to people you know we will we will we will hold events we'll go and talk to people where we know people visit whether that's supermarket car parks leisure center whatever it might be you know with the, the pandemic allowing we will get out there and we will speak to people so we won't just rely on those digital channels um, the second piece around the groups that we've traditionally been un unsuccessful um, at, at reaching and whether that's young people or people from the BAME communities actually we need to address that and actively and actively take steps because one of the things that we have found out is that whilst the council perhaps hasn't the council in it through its formal structures and engagement process and consultation hasn't been successful actually th these groups are engaged around the borough maybe not with the council but there are places where where they are connected and we actually need to go and speak to them where they're connected rather than trying to get them to come to speak to us and that does as well come back to the point that i alluded to in the presentation we need to take advantage more of the great links that councillors have, ward councillors have in their borough, because often I think that, and what we've found out is that councillors are, are connected or, or they're aware of the places where residents are connected that actually people at the council running services aren't aware of. So we need to make those links stronger. Thank you. And with that, I think um, We've almost come to the end. I just want to ask a very, very quick question. You were talking about uh, recruiting local and young people. Um, how's that going and how many young people have you managed to recruit and how they're responding to this? Well, th they won't be responding that quickly at the moment because like I've said, this is j literally hot off the press, these, this kind of work. But uh, uh, Mandy may know more than more than me on this, but I just know that it's something that the council has been working on for for some time now in terms of um, a recruitment drive, a different approach to recruitment, trying to attract people that do reflect our community. Um, so it isn't. It, I'd be lying if I said that was fully formed and worked through yet in terms of a piece of work that's happening. But actually, it's something that has come through as a clear recommendation that that we should try and do rather than we are, if that makes sense. Thank you, yeah, it does. Okay, well with that, I would like to thank Can Councillor I... Catherine Dunn. Sorry. Sorry, may I have one last question? Yes, very sure. quickly. We are over time on this, but there you are. Oh, sorry. Quickly. Um, John, you mentioned that um, you are going to make attempts to contact people if they don't have IT and in this COVID climate, how would you do that? Well, we, we can write to people, you know, um, we can go and visit people. You know, I, like I, I mentioned earlier in terms of the, the community hub, we we contacted 
22 and a half thousand people um, across the borough by telephone or or knocking on their door or sending them a letter. So it can be done. Um, and like I said, we can also go to where we know people are connected and where communities do meet up. So it, the, you know, the, there's more to it than emails and, and online. You know, the good old fashioned door knocking sometimes really does work and is the best way to speak to people. I come Although, from a background. Uh, sorry. Communities sorry. aren't meeting up at the moment because we're not allowed to have more than six people together and gathering. No, but we but communities do go places. So whether you know we we've talked um, shopping centres, this type of thing. So we we are up for getting out there, meeting people where they go about their their daily business. But like I said, we we also have you know during the pandemic safely um, a, a, and socially distanced, we were visiting people uh, and talking to them on, on their doorstep about support that, about support that they might need. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, okay, and with that, now I will thank uh, Councillor Catherine Dunn. Thank you very much um, for your hard work on this project. It's fantastic. Thank you, um, Mandy Skinner, the Assistant Chief Executive, and Elliot, Elliot Brooks, the Director of Communities. Thank you so very much this evening for coming and presenting this fantastic report. Thank you. Okay, and with that, we will now move on to Item number five, which is local focus, rebuilding our businesses after COVID-19. So we have with us Mr. Alan Rides uh, of the Hounslow Chamber of Commerce and Elliot Brooks, director. Have I got this right? No, Mr. Rides and Mr. Brooks will, yeah, will make their um, presentation now. Thank you very much, Mr. Rides. Sorry to put in there, it's Tom Brooks, Councillor. Tom Brooks, right. yeah, there's Brooks no relation. I, I can see where you've got confused, but it's, it's Tom Brooks this time. Yeah, yeah, I know. Do you know what? Earlier I remember Tom Brooks, but here on this page they've got Elliot Brooks written, so I'm not taking the blame for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. So sorry about that. So That's Tom Brooks, worry. Director of... I'm not a director, I wish. I'm, Whoa, uh, I'm see, they not a director yet. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll make you direct. Some promotion oh. there. We'll make cool. you direct tonight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, thank you so uh, much, uh, Mr. Rides and Mr. Brooks, for you. Yeah, I, I'm going to start if that's all right, Alan. And, and before I introduce Alan, I thought it would be good to say a little bit about the, uh, well, the the timeline really. Alan's going to go on to talk about the vital partnership work that's ongoing really in supporting businesses in our town centres. But I think um, it, it's worth talking about that timeline and, and what, what's happened and what the council's been able to do. <coughs> So I think it was, it was um, late March where we where we were put into national lockdown and almost daily there were new headlines, there was new data, there were things that the council had to, to react to, whether it was um, disseminating information on grants or actually distributing those grants, um, talking about job retention schemes, the furlough scheme, loans, um, there, there were there were lots. I think over 20 different schemes that we had to make our businesses aware of, um, and we'd also be, you know, hearing, as I say, really rather scary data. I think um, in June it was we were um, in the headline Townslow, that is, for being predicted the second worst affected economy out of all the boroughs in London. So that was that was really rather worrying too. So there was a lot of reactive stuff happening, but at the same time, we were working proactively too, and we were. We, we were looking at what we were going to do to to recover, um, and actually that's something that that has been worked on. And I, and I understand that a framework for proposed economic recovery and regeneration strategy outcome and outcome sorry, and projects will be taken to Borough Council next month. But um, with that, I'll I'll hand over to Alan who can. Um, present and I think he's got a, a PowerPoint on the the Safer Business Hounslow program which is a partnership between the Hounslow Chamber and the Council. Okay checking to make sure I'm not muted. <laughs> um, first of all I should thank you very very much for inviting um, myself and the Hounslow Chamber of Commerce to have the opportunity to address um, your, yourselves and uh, also to uh, comment, if I can, on the um, one Hounslow concept, which I think is a superb way forward of the council working with the community for the greater good. 
especially at this incredibly key point in our economic development. Um, I'm going to see if I can now um, share a screen and um, bring up my presentation. Um, and I'm going to try and talk at the same time, which is um, a very difficult thing to do sometimes. And there we go. I think I've got there. Yes, that looks perfect. Um, thank you. OK, it's always good to have a little bit of confirmation rather than just dead silence in the background. You're never sure whether you've completely <laughs> lost the connection or not. Um, so um, at Hounslow Chamber of Commerce has been around in your borough, the borough, for uh, this year, 111 years. Um, we, we like to say we're the voice of business across the borough, but in reality, we're the glue that helps connect all of the business um, to help those businesses grow through better connections with the major PLCs in the borough, um, like Heathrow Airport Limited, like the council themselves, and like GSK and the host and myriad of other major companies. Um, the, this ranges, um, our services range from helping contractors via our regeneration events, which the council fully supports, and we love to showcase the wonderful work that is transforming our borough from being uh, the, the industrial heart of West London with lots of chimneys coughing out smoke from 50 years ago to the smart city of the future that is transforming Hounslow into, uh, ranging from the business parks in um, Chiswick through to um, uh, Bedfont Lakes. And we, we also work really specifically in the retail and hospitality sectors via um, what was run by the council, Safer Business Hounslow, and is now run by the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and we're using Safer Business Hounslow to help business operate um, in not only a COVID-19 secure environment, but to also operate in a crime safe shopping areas of the borough. Um, I'm going to just remind a few people um, of what 2019 was like, because it does seem like such a long time ago, um, with some images from the, the Treaty Centre. Um, volumes of people like this just don't get to be seen very much anymore. Um, and here's a nice picture of the pedestrian area of the high street, of the market that's no longer. And um, this is a, a lovely image of the pedestrian area of the high street showing the abundance of cycles uh, and people. And this is what the Blenheim Centre used to look like with a huge car park that's now a big redevelopment site. So what, what's been going on since last year to this year? In January, we were showing that there's a focus to the council um, of how the highest crime area in the borough is the Hounslow Town Centre. And what's more, it's the only area in the borough without any significant falls in crime during lockdown. Um, there's been newspaper articles about uh, stabbings on the high street area and the, the police regard it as the criminal hotspot of Hounslow in the town centre itself. So what, what have we been doing to try and help address this situation? We've been working closely with the council in what I like to call a public-private partnership of you, the public sector, helping us, the private sector, through a bit of funding, a little bit of partnership and a little bit of sponsorship from some of the big PLCs to help put out people into the high street. And we've got a team um, of now four advisors that we originally deployed in uh, July with the opening up of the high street to encourage shops to feel that they could confidently open and feel that they were offering COVID secure premises for shoppers to um, go and visit. Um, on the left, you can see what the pedestrian area of the high street looked like when the people first were deployed and, and also on the right hand, picture as well, just not many people around at all. 
Um, we work very closely with the council to deliver an online um, hashtag shop safe, shop local um, and rolled out toolkits for reopening your business to business people showing how they could confidently do that, not just in the business sector, but also in the hospitality sector. And on the bottom right hand side, you've got a picture of Tony, one of our advisors visiting one of the shops um, being very well received. Uh, this project was funded by the European Union um, for the um, uh, development fund and um, we actually managed to get some additional help um, thrown in on our visits around the borough to get the message out there um, from Councillor Curran. Uh, and it, it's interesting, we, we measured at the start of the programme that in Hounslow Town Centre footfall was only 53% of what it was a year ago when shops were allowed to open up. Uh, by comparison, the West End footfall was at 20% of what it was a year ago. We managed to get some articles in various newspapers. The Financial Mail on Sunday um, talked about how the Hounslow High Street is thriving um, because of the, the banks that are there, uh, about the um, footfall is slightly due down due to COVID-19, but the high street is thriving. The numbers of shoppers are exceeding um, the safe levels, uh, sorry, are not exceeding the safe levels for social distancing. And there was a small interview with our own Sally Smith in this particular article, um, talking about how Lots of people are coming into the town centre to shop local, to bank local, and because they feel safe. And on the right hand side is an article in our own um, magazine that goes out bi-monthly, uh, talking about how the shopkeepers have welcomed our advisors into their shops um, on the back of the council launched hashtag shop safe shop local campaign, where we're able to um, deliver great advice. The, uh, a really interesting message out of all of this that came about was that our advisors, while they're going around doing their rounds in the pedestrian area or in the Treaty Centre or Blenheim Centre um, to help shoppers feel safe, were so welcomed by the shop owners that the four members of staff in the 10 week cycle that this took place in, didn't have to buy and pay for lunch once. The shop owners of all of the restaurants, cafes, um, cafeterias, gave them food through the whole 10 week of their program. Um, they've been on a bit of a diet since, but the, the shop owners rolled out the work on red carpet to make them, um, to, to say to them, thank you so much for the work that you're doing. This ended up in, by September, 10 weeks later, in Hounslow Centre's footfall was now up to 80% of the time it was a year ago. By comparison, the West End had risen from 20 to 30%. And the hashtag shop safe, shop local message rolled out between the two of us was working and getting through. October this month, came a different turn in this cycle. Um, at the beginning of September, we had noticed that there were beginning to be some waves or perhaps spikes in our local um, community. And I contacted and reached out to Kelly O'Neill to say that we've seen some of your newsletters, your excellent newsletters that have been doing the rounds and I can see the problems that are there are in some of the areas in the east of the borough and can our team go out and work with your team to help roll out a better message that's urgently and more urgently needed in those areas. Um, she was over the moon that somebody had actually reached out to her and was offering help. So when the end of our contract came about at the end of uh, middle of September, um, we then had to think about what do we do for phase two? 
Um, the problem with phase two is that with the increased number of people coming back onto our streets, there were new rules being applied by governments, um, new requirements for face coverings, new NHS QR codes being needed to be on display in a lot of shops, track and trace systems and a rule of six. So the focus had changed from being more about health and stopping the virus spreading. Um, so currently our team are rolled out again for the next four weeks of the whole of the month of October, um, making sure that the um, QR codes are displayed in coffee shops or any shops that have got tables and chairs inside where people can gather um, to make sure that on the right hand side people wear face coverings in lots of different um, dialects and um, regularly having public announcements from um, the much loved Kelly O'Neill. Um, we're also rolling out some posters um, to different shops using images taken from these shops talking about how we're trying to help them stay open if they can encourage people to wear safe um, face coverings. So working as this public private partnership between the local businesses on the streets um, has really engaged them with us, with the council to be able to um, try and deal and combat this issue, which has helped reduce the, the, the where Hounslow sit amongst all of the 33 London boroughs from being one of the highest growth areas for COVID-19 to being a, a, a reasonable place in that cycle. And it's, um, we're also helping to reduce crime as well as make sure that the areas are COVID secure. So um, we're working hard to make sure that we can work closely to contribute um, and then to regrow business in our town centres. Um, finally, what's the future? for our town centre. Um, the High Street quarter was due to be completed originally um, in 2021. Now with COVID-19, um, we're not sure when that will be and um, we're waiting to see what news there is. But I thought I'd put up some images that you can see from what the area is supposed to look like when it's all finished. Finally, I'd like to round up by saying that um, Hounslow Chamber is working closely with the local authority and much love Hounslow Ch Council to roll out kickstart for 16 to 24 year olds with this looming economic crisis in front of us. Um, so far, um, we are the leading chamber of commerce of all of the chambers of commerce locally in London and have attracted um, 167 people um, to put in, um, employers to put in applications for 167 people, which is an incredible number, which is now starting to roll itself through the Department of Work and Pensions. Um, and I, I, I guess the, the, the key message that I'm going to try and finish with from this presentation um, is that we are looking to um, work more closely and be part of uh, our goal is to finally end up with a, a, a bid, a business improvement district in the area, uh, the central area, as there is rolled out in Hammersmith and Fulham, in um, Ealing, in Kingston and in Staines, to, so that um, the, the shops can really feel the benefit of what a partnership between council and shop owners can deliver. But um, that is something for the economic, um, the economy to settle down for for next year, later next year, before we can move ahead with that. Um, while I'm trying to get out of this, has anybody got any questions? OK, we'll thank you, uh, Mr. Rides. I'll get to the questions in a minute. I'm just going to check if we've got any questions from the public first on the live Q&A event. But first of all, I want to say thank you very much for that lovely presentation. And um, it was great. Yes, and you're working very hard and your 
four advisors seem to be doing a great job and appreciated by the local businesses. So thank you for that. And uh, now with that, um, I will say that we can take questions um, from members of public. So as I asked before, if you have any questions, please type them into the live event Q&A. Um, and um, I do believe that uh, we have a comment, comment from uh, Councillor Mehrban. She says, we've invested a lot of money in our town centre and by having by having 10 banks. It doesn't help with our investment in what's being built to get people to come and spend money here. Uh, that's what Councillor Shaida Mirban says. It is very difficult to get people to come and spend money there, especially in this um, time, COVID-19. Uh, but still, as you say, with the Commerce of Chambers hard work and with um, the local council, we, we are still doing good, Mr. Wrights. Um, can I say perhaps in part in answer to that, that a lot of the smaller um, villages around the town centre of Hounslow have had local branches of banks closed. So when shopkeepers and want to come and bank their monthly or weekly cash, they come now into the centre of Hounslow. And they don't just come in to bank their money. They do visit the shops, they do visit the restaurants and they do spend their money in town. And it's quite an interesting dynamic to watch and see what goes on there. So it's become a real hustle and bustling little place that's not so little anymore. Thank you. Um, yeah, it is quite busy. The queues outside some of the banks are unbelievable, aren't they, at times? Um, OK, we, we don't seem to have any more questions from the public, um, so... Um, sorry, sorry, Chair. Um, I, with your permission, um, yes. um, it's Bill Lee speaking. Sorry, Bill Lee, the clerk. Um, we had a question submitted yesterday from a member of the public, so I'm asking your permission here. It was submitted yesterday. It's not directly aimed at either Mr. Wright or Mr. Brooks. In fact, it's not even from our area, uh, but I think as we're the first area forum up, the, the lady has chosen to ask us. Um, the reason I'm asking if I can put it in here, it is relevant to business regeneration. Yes, um, certainly. So yep. the, the a business owner has asked a question and Robert Coomer has very kindly supplied an answer. So with your permission, Chair, I'll, I'll just read both out at this point. Yes, sure. Go ahead. Uh, okay, the question <coughs> came from Matilda Goes. I hope I've pronounced that right. My business is based in Brentford. It has been severely affected by the COVID-19 restrictions, not only during lockdown, but after lockdown too. I want to apply for a discretionary grant. Who can I approach about this? She'd emailed her MP who hadn't responded. And um, Robert has very kindly come back with a reply. It's not good news, I'm afraid, for Ms. Goes. There are no grants currently available through the council to support business impacted by COVID. The business interruption grant the business has received is the only grant funding that the business would be eligible for and has received it based on the information they have provided. The quote from the government.uk website is for grants that will be made available if local restrictions are imposed by the government. The London Borough of Hounslow will be publishing a policy on this in the coming weeks. Due to limited funds being made available, it is unlikely businesses who are not required to close during the restrictions will be eligible. And Ms. Goers' business wasn't actually required to close. The problem is, or oh, hasn't been closed recently, the problem is no footfall. Tom Brooks has also asked for some stats on grants we have given to businesses for this meeting. Um, Robert says, we have distributed support to 2,947 business rates account holders, totaling £40,735,000 and a further £1,715,000 to 225 other businesses. This relates to the support the government put in place for the initial period of lockdown starting in March. 
the scheme closed for applications at the end of August and all grants were paid by the end of September. That's all I have from Rob, well, Chair. Thank you, Bill. I think Mr. Wright's had his hand up. Yes. Um, I would like also to say that that is a very common question that our task force faced um, in the lockdown. And Councillor Rajouat was very kind enough to come along and appear regularly on the task force uh, to deal with those types of questions very directly to help local businesses out when there were delays and got back to people very quickly. So the engagement that we've had as a chamber with the council at um, graduates level for the task force uh, with Catherine Dunn um, for the um, uh, the webinar this morning on um, Clean Air Day and also um, later this month on the Black History Month has been um, really good and helped to get across a lot of key messages to business in the borough. Thank you. Thank you. I was just seeing whether we had any more questions but we don't so we will go to members now um, of course um, I just need to remind members that um, I will introduce you one by one and uh, please introduce yourselves every time you speak and mute your microphone after you have finished so we will start with Vice Chair Bandra Chopra do you have any questions yes Alan, that's a really good presentation. Thank you for that. Um, just wondered because I haven't been able to uh, attend anything on um, at the Chamber of Commerce. How are you keeping your meetings going these days? Are they? Do you have any face to face, or are they virtual, or what? Could you just update us. Uh, certainly. I, first of all, I've missed you too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we've been we started off with doing um, one webinar per week and it ended up with, by doing two webinars per week. Um, we were actually rolling out a lot more webinars than any of the other local chambers of commerce across London. We um, also started with um, one live event that took place at the beginning of last month in VentureX as a business breakfast. Um, it was attended by about um, 20 people, socially distanced, um, but uh, who were very relieved to be able to get out and actually see people face to face. Um, but um, we are sc scaling things back again now, um, being very cautious, going more online, uh, but leaving the window open, um, not just to let some fresh air in, but to let some ideas in to be able to evolve quickly and be light footed enough to change um, as the economy and the government allows us to change and to do more events. Right, that's good to hear because um, I think um, the Chamber of Commerce does actually, House of Chamber of Commerce does actually do a great job and in um, connecting businesses and promoting Hounslow and everything that Hounslow does. So well done. Thank you. Well, we're very lucky to have such a wonderful borough that not many people realise is so good and it's a challenge to get that message across. Thank you. And uh, now we will ask um, Councillor Tom Bruce if he has any questions. Yeah, I've got um, I've got a comment and a question, actually. Um, I just wanted to thank the Chamber for being so proactive on the Kickstart scheme. Um, it falls loosely under my portfolio, my cabinet role in children's and education. Um, and uh, when I asked about it, when I heard about it and I asked about it, I was told the Chamber were already chomping at the bit to get going. They'd been in touch. They wanted to kick things off. So it's brilliant, brilliant news. And I'm, I'm really grateful that, that we've pushed ahead with it. And, and as you say, have got more people coming into it than uh, than I think any other borough, or certainly most other boroughs uh, have. My question really is about with uh, my uh, uh, continuing my children's hat on and talking about younger children, about when schools have come back. I wonder if your uh, the staff that have been out and about have seen any difference on the high street. I mean, positive, negative, any sort of things that uh, they've noticed since schools have been back in September, whether it's that particularly has had an impact in any way? I 
I, th I think it's more about getting um, parents back into being able to go out instead of being at home during the day looking after children. So perhaps that is one of the reasons for the, the increase in footfall that's gradually happened. And that, those footfall numbers are easing back a little bit in the first week in October. Um, but it's, it's more about giving people the confidence that if they go out to shops and they go out to hospitality areas, they're just as safe or perhaps safer than being inside their own home with the level of COVID secure um, protection that they have in those environments. But thank you very much for your very kind comments about how quickly we've been moving. And we've certainly been down to West Thames College, to Cranford Community College, to University of West London, to plug in with all of the key um, deliverers, not just the local job centre, to try and make sure we've got a pipeline of people that we can start filling opportunities for. Next, That's great. Thing. great. Thank you. You're next. OK, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Bruce. Thank you. And we go to Councillor Pritham Garival. Any questions? Thank you, Chair. Um, Alan, Mr. Alan Rides, very good presentation and very nice meeting you. I'm your local councillor for Hounslow Town Centre, from Hounslow Centre Board, yeah? Um, you're doing a great job of connecting businesses together. I've got a couple of questions. Number one, how much the Chamber is involved in keeping the businesses there in Hounslow Town Centre or getting the new businesses in? Are you involved there at all? That's my first question. And second question is, now we know that Cineworld is sort of either temporarily going or permanently going. And that's going to affect our town center a lot. We were hoping that'll bring a lot of people in, that'll help our businesses, that'll help our restaurants and all that. So what are your views on that? Um, my views um, are that it's such a huge shame that organizations like Cineworld have been starved of new blockbuster films being rolled out by the big studios especially in the US, but the, the big opportunity for Cineworld in Hounslow Town Centre was to be able to roll out primarily the first release of blockbusters from Bollywood. And it's yet to be a bit clearer as to what will happen there. The um, shell of the cinema is in itself completed now and handed over to Cineworld. The issue is to get a company like Cineworld to spend the money in decking out a full cinema with a very unclear future of what we can all operate in. And we, we're just going to have to wait and um, weather out this winter, I think, as best we can. Um, but certainly we do encourage and we signpost any new shops, any people with clever ideas who want to open up a retail outlet to head for the busiest shopping area in town. And that's Hounslow Town Centre. Yeah, thank you. OK, thank you for that. Councillor Vikram Garewal, any questions or comments? Hello, Councillor Vikram Garewal. No? Sorry, Chair, my, my Wi-Fi connection is dropping. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Alan, for for fantastic presentation and also all the work that Hanzo uh, Chamber of Commerce do is, is so vital. Uh, I've got a, a comment and, and a question after that. So uh, my comment would be that, uh, you know, the high streets, unfortunately, uh, and local businesses uh, were really suffering, uh, especially the ones that didn't have websites. And unfortunately, we've seen coronavirus accelerate uh, that switch to online um, shopping and online commerce. And it's a real shame uh, for our high streets. Uh, second point also on, on Cineworld, uh, as an avid uh, you know, James Bond fan, I'm really annoyed with, with what they've done uh, to push it to next year. Uh, and I completely agree on the point about um, the, the lack of quality films coming out and the ramifications that's going to have. I think five, five and a half thousand jobs uh, could could go nationally. Um, my, my question actually is about what the 
So the residents I speak to, uh, the main fear they have about returning back to the high street uh, and you know, for us to increase football with what we want to see is they're worried that there's not enough social distancing um, in, in the high street uh, by, by people uh, that go there. Uh, and sometimes they feel that the, the shops themselves are not uh, doing enough to enforce it. Uh, what, is, what is the Chamber of Commerce doing uh, in that space? And I appreciate it may be difficult um, you know, to, to do uh, everything you would like to do in this space during this time. Um, so the focus of the Chamber of Commerce advisors during this now four week phase two contract is to advise shops on QR codes on entrances at doors so that people do the test and trace to make sure that people who visit shops and the shopkeepers have all got face coverings or masks on and to make sure people really do understand the rule of six and that that is properly enforced because the more people understand this the more people will um, feel more secure to go to shopping centres and the more people uh, the, the, the less this virus will expand in our own community and we can get it back under control again so so those are the three focus points um, getting rule of six, getting test and trace back in place and making sure everybody's wearing a mask properly. And if we can achieve that, and we've been specifically deployed at different areas um, in reacting to um, emails that have come into the council that have been passed on to us um, in areas like the uh, Witten Road, going from Hounslow Centre towards past Hounslow Station down uh, towards Witten. There's some shops there. People weren't going into the shops wearing masks. There were questions. Three days later, our people were asked to go down there and they did. And suddenly there was a, a change around in what's going on. So we're nimble and light footed enough to react when there are questions asked to be able to get out there and deliver something for the local shops. May I add something, Chair? Um, yes. Just, just in, in answer to the, to the councillor's question on, uh, or, or point, I should say, on, on town centres or high streets in general and how they're changing, not just, not just because of COVID, but also because of people's shift in shopping patterns, etc. And that very much goes back to the, the section earlier on our community engagement. And at this time, we're, we're doing a, we are engaging with our communities, talking about the future of our town centres, what we, what, what, what they want their, what, what is their vision for the, for the town centres in, in the future. So that's a live, um, engagement process just the very start of it before we kind of start we, we, get, we go into to other aspects of this engagement start shaping it but um yeah that that's live i don't know if i'm allowed to put that up in the chat <laughs> a link to it thank you alan and tom that that'd be great if we could have a, a link to it as well for, for the we'll public do. yeah thank i'll put that up thank you OK, thank you very much. And we move on to Councillor um, Afsil Kani. Do you have any questions? Yes, Chair, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, um, to Ellen, thank you very much for uh, providing us this information. And I've got a one question. Is uh, Honslow Chamber helping local uh, businesses financially or not? OK, so um, we're not physically in terms of our own finances. What we're doing is um, as our task force that we have weekly. Um, we have um, managers from banks giving advice on banking. Um, we have people from financial institutions giving advice on alternative means of finance through this. And we've got people like Councillor Rajuat talking about grants that were available and potentially can be available in the future, dependent on how things um, change from uh, central government. So yes, we, we do give advice on where you can get finance from via what we call um, Ask the Expert. OK. OK, thank you very much for that. OK, thank you. Uh, and of course, Councillor Nisar Malik, unfortunately, is not with us, so we can't ask him a question because he couldn't log on. Uh, same with Councillor Shahid Mirban. Councillor Jagdish Sharma uh, had to leave us at 6.15. Uh, 
And so we come to Councillor Sohan Samra. Any questions there? Oh, no, I don't have any question. Thank you, Alan. You already explained and the uh, question we ask most of them. I don't think anything else left. Thank you always you. call me last and I have no question. <laughs> Thank you very much. They're all going alphabetically. Um, yeah. But however, I am good. I can see Karen Smith. Councillor Karen Smith has just joined us. Karen, I don't know if you heard uh, the presentation or whether you've just come in and have any questions or not, but welcome. Any questions? Did you hear any of it? Smith, you're on mute. Unmute yourself, please. You're mute, Karen. You're muted. Unmuted. Sorry there. Yeah, sorry. I only caught the tail, so I won't ask any questions. Sorry. Okay. All right. That was the rebuilding of our businesses after COVID-19. Wonderful presentation. So when it goes uh, on YouTube, you can watch it back then and you'll know all about it. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us then. And um, OK, I have uh, one question, Alan. We were talking about uh, face coverings. Um, now, sometimes people are wandering around and the shopkeeper says, um, oh, could you put a mask on, please? And they say, oh, I'm exempt. How do you tackle that? Because there's nothing for them to show you or they don't show you. So how, how can we tackle that? How do we know whether they're, they're being straightforward with us or not? Um, well, it's a great question. And it's like asking somebody to prove their disability. <laughs> Um, you can't really. You have to take people's uh, honest answer as them just being honest. And at the end of the day, um, it's only recently that people have been told that you have to wear uh, a face mask. It's for that person's safety, that person's health that they're wearing it. And mm -hmm. um, so all you can do is to say, well, you know, I, I hope that you all are OK and that um, you don't have any issues with um, this and that that's, that's about all you can do. Our advisors are out there to um, be the very soft touch of a smiling face and a here's some free advice for you. This is what we prefer you to do. Some of it is mandatory by law and you know to, to best advise shopkeepers and people on the street. But well, we're not the heavy arm of enforcement but the soft arm of Soft arm of enlightenment. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you for that. Um, OK, Councillor Shaida Mirban has just sent a message, said, I'm still here. Yes, thank you, Councillor Mirban, but um, we can't hear you, so we don't know if you want to say anything. But with that, I will say thank you very much to um, Mr. Alan Rides from Chamber of Commerce for a fantastic presentation, update on the town centre, and um, let's keep our shops safe and shop locally we'll tell everyone yeah thank you very much for that uh thank you mr tom brooks as well thank you and with that we will move on to item agenda item six which is questions from residents uh i've been made aware of two questions so one um, bill already read out to us and answered uh bill are you going to read out the next one for us please um, the next question um, is really suitable for item six rather than anything else. So, yes, I shall. Um, oh, my word, I've lost the question. It's, it's in here somewhere. <laughs> it's regarding, I shall waffle while I'm looking for it. It's regarding fly tipping in the town centre. So, uh, we don't have an answer, unlike the last one. I've got it if you can't find it, yeah? Phil? Yeah, I thought it was yesterday and now I've gone and lost where it was. OK, Bill, I've got a copy of it, yeah? Thank you. Sorry about that, Councillor. That's OK. I'll it's read it out. Down. OK, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's regarding fly tipping in Hounslow West Ward. Um, basically, the scenario is reporting hotspot areas daily, example, on Basildon Road. Um, they're saying um, it's being picked up by Hounslow Highways within 24 hours. Fantastic work by the crew. Um, enforcement cameras were installed for around three months, but recently removed. Since then, fly tipping has started uh, reoccurring. So what they really want to know, where are the anti 
fly uh, anti-fly tipping signs, uh, a dummy CCTV camera. What is the council's long term approach on this topic? And what is the long term plan for this issue? Residents are fed up of reporting these areas on a daily basis and the items get removed. The offenders win uh, and continue to carry on with fly tipping as they know it will be picked up. Um, the person says I'd like to stay anonymous, but um, they just want an answer. Uh, fly tipping is a is a whole countrywide problem, isn't it? But uh, Hounslow Ward Council, Hounslow West Ward councillors, any answers, or are you going to pick this up for later, councillor, councillor West councillors? Buy me a truck. Oh, sorry. Is someone else going to speak? Sorry, councillor Samra. I said, buy me a truck, I'll, I'll do that job. <laughs> okay. Because that, that is a daily occur, but could be even at behind the uh, Standier uh, Bank, they cleared the uh, day before, there's already uh, five, six bags there. What can you do? There's no camera, nothing at all. They keep saying, yes, we installed the camera. They didn't. Okay, but the cameras have to go all around the ward and uh, it stops yeah, while they're there. Yeah. Councillor Jobra, any, any, will you take this on board or? Definitely. I mean, uh, as you mentioned, Chair, it is a continual problem and it's a problem through the whole nation, not just in one ward. Um, we're fighting it every day. As Councillor Summer says, we've several times sent um, lorries and trucks uh, through Hounds of Highways to clear up rubbish uh, behind uh, the area behind Santander and the other shops along that parade. As soon as we've cleared it in a day or two, it's back to what it was before. Uh, continually, we get casework about Jim. fly tipping, mattresses and various other items along the street, on street corners, at the bottom of trees. Whenever it gets reported, it's picked up within 24 hours by Hounslow Highways. But it's it's really down to the public to try and help and to really show respect for their own areas and show that they actually, you know, are proud of their area by not doing these things and by and if they find people doing it to report them. I mean, we have cameras installed, but sometimes you can't always get the face clearly on a camera because it's positioned too high. And sometimes you can't get the exact number plate of the cars that are dumping things. No. So it's an ever ending battle and it's something we recognise. Um, we are dealing with it, but we need the public to do their bit as well. Thank you, Councillor Jobra. Thank you. Um, any other council? Oh, Councillor Pritham Garival. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, I agree with Bandana. I think. Uh, we have tried educating people. We have tried doing the leaflets, even Hounslow Highways do, go and knock people's doors where there is a fly tipping in that area and try to educate them. As people, I don't think they are so responsible. So what we do is we like our responsible citizens, responsible residents to report if they can. And if they see somebody doing it, tell them this is our area. Please keep our area clean. And that would help. I think we need help from the residents on this case. That's true. Thank you. Thank you. Any other councillor want to come in on that? <laughs> Otherwise, what I would like to say is councillor Nisar Malik. Um, thank you. You sent a message through uh, that you wanted to ask a question and you're still with the meeting. Um, I didn't say you'd gone. I said you had problems logging on and we can't see you or hear you. Uh, I'm looking at uh, live Q&A and I cannot see a question from you, so I don't know how to put your question forward. I can't hear you or see you. That was the reason. So with this, actually, um, we come on to uh, agenda item number seven. Uh, which is any other matters that the chair considers urgent and uh, I have no urgent matters. Um, agenda number eight is the next meeting and the date of that meeting is, if I can get there, um, 
so the next meeting of the Central Hounslow Area Forum is provisionally uh, sh uh, scheduled for 14th January 2021, but it has not been confirmed. So um, I'd like to advise everyone to please check the council website for details on that. And uh, with that, it's time for me to say thank you to everyone um, for participating today. Uh, thank you to all the members. Thank you to um, Chamber of Commerce for coming and presenting. Thank you to council officers for your support. Thank you to the ICT officers who had made this seem seamless today. Uh, because in planning the other night, I had such problems. I was kicked out five times and I missed voting on it. But today, such work went perfectly. Thank you, everyone. Um, and um, thank you to Democratic Services and APO who supported and organised the meeting. Thank you very, very much for being there. And thank you to the public for um, for joining in and listening. And so with this, um, I just say good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all very much, everybody. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Good evening. Bye. -bye. Good night. Thank you.